WNST Towson, Baltimore, and WNST.net. For those of you listening in Radio Land, this will make some sense. For those of you watching on our YouTube and our WNS TV channel, this will be more fun for you, and I do encourage you to go out and check it out, uh, out online. Luke is here. We're in the home studio. We are going through boxes of, of literally of stuff. Uh, I told you you'd be a little amazed and overwhelmed by the sheer depth of it all. A lot of us put together and like sort of organized, and there was one envelope that I pulled out with a bunch of stuff of, of different eras, and I don't know why it was kind of all thrown together. Some stuff's organized, some stuff's not. I figured out that a lot of this stuff here, there's a CFL stallions. 1994 Stallions. I want to make sure I, I'm using my webcam the right way so everybody can have some fun with this stuff, but this is just stuff that's just like WWLG Radio 84, 94, that was my, that was my season. No, was Wait, were they called the Stallions at that point, or was that is Baltimore this, you, CFL, CFL Football Club? Your Baltimore CFL beep. God, <laughs> Do you remember they actually beeped it out? I I, I think it was Channel Two had the they G- they had the television rights, didn't they? Jim Spiros, man, still my Facebook. And they they would they had the song and everything, and it was Baltimore CFL beep. So this is a fun one. This is a Detroit Lions dressing room pass. My buddies and I got in the car and drove to Detroit, and and then Toronto to see the Orioles play, and the Oilers were playing a preseason game at the Silverdome. In front of, you know, 1,400. The Silverdome was an amazing place because it was... Home a, it, of WrestleMania, WrestleMania 3. Was it really? That's the only was thing. Was that I, Hulk, Hulk and Andre? Yeah. Is that, okay. The, I came by. I, I got yeah. it right. At least WWF I right always claimed it was 93,000, and most people seem to think it was more like 70 some. But still, no, for Dude, you grew up in Syracuse. You went to Syracuse. So you, get everybody your background, because people don't even know. Like, you spent a couple years at Syracuse going to school, right? Yeah. The Carrier Dome, did it suck you in and blow you out? Was it air? Um, when you when you left the building, did you kind of get pushed out? Yeah, yeah. Okay, they so they had know, the revolving doors. Okay, so right. The, the, That's why they had the revolving doors I was because gonna, they I couldn't. I was going to wonder yeah. if you had ever been to it's a dome. It's funny like that, that you mentioned. I hadn't even thought about the that. The Metrodome until, was like that. The Silver Dome yeah. was like that. But uh, unique experiences. It's yeah, it's so, definitely. I mean, now the dome experience isn't the same as as it was back then. Nineteen eighty seven Stanley Cup playoffs. Patrick Division semifinals. Beating some Islander ass. Oh, that was kind of fun. Uh, back in the day, what else? I mean, I got so much stuff here, but it's all a lot of this was John Stebman stuff. Like, like this here. Oh my God, look at that! I found the press pass from the night that I met Ed Frankovic. Very cool. If anybody sees Ed Frankovic <laughs> right now, you tell him. And I want to screenshot that. I want to take a picture of that right now. His life changed if, forever. If you after tell that. Ed Frankovic that I found <laughs> the press pass. Now, the reason I know we met that night is this is October the thirteenth, nineteen eighty-five. So I turned seventeen the next day. Okay, and I know I met him that night because Pele Lindbergh was the great goal uh, keeper for the Philadelphia Flyers. And he died very, very tragically on that weekend. And uh, I, I met. Well, he, he died a month later. So I, I met. I met Ed a month later. Then I, I met. I did not meet Ed this night, but I met Ed in that month. I met him right when Pelly Lindbergh died. And I remember it was one of the first conversations I had. And maybe I met him that night. But this is from the era, 1985. This year was special because if, if you notice, do you see who the Caps were playing that night in 1985? You see that. The Edmonton Oilers. So this was a working. This wasn't just a press pass. This was a press pass to see Wayne Gretzky play. There you go. So when you know when you could see the great one, something different, right? You know, I'm 17 years old. I, I just turned 17, and I got to cover the game with the great Phil Jackman. I might even I I, I covered this game story. I have I, I have a game story from that night. So. Baltimore Evening. Yeah, Sun you mentioned that. This comes to mind now. I don't have any documentation of it, but. Do you remember this was the summer of 2011? The NBA was on a lockout, but LeBron James and Durant and so many of the biggest stars in the NBA played at Morgan. Morgan. Oh my I God. I went. That, that was a there, legendary. It was be, you talk about fire code violations and everything, but to see that. Anybody who was there that night said it was a top five, like all It was amazing. Like, crazy and look, I, I don't idolize LeBron James in the way that I do Michael Jordan because Jordan grew up. You know, I grew up watching Jordan as the greatest of all time, but to see that many players in that forum, in that small of a venue, it's like thinking of some of your all time favorite bands and getting to see them in a small little club. 
Like that that was that was neat. And I'm not like a huge NBA guy, but you mentioned in Gretzky just that that just came to mind that but I don't have a program, a flyer, anything from that night. I just, have just by memory. John Stedman's press box seat card from the NFC championship game. January Steady always gave me his stuff. I mean, Steady just uh, like would Steady didn't collect. Senior, Senior, I, I got you a, an envelope full of stuff here. Look at there, Senior. I, I was down at the NFC Championship game. Coach Gibbs sense his best. This Parcells <laughs> fella, he might work out. I'm not sure about it. By the way, uh, the Giants won that game 17 to nothing over the uh, Washington Redskins. Raul Allegre, Joe Morris sealed the deal with a one yard rush. AstroTurf outdoors. Vegas line, Giants by seven. How about this? Jay Schrader. No wonder they lost. <laughs> uh, say oh. he was 20 of 50. Ooh. This is a Baltimore Orioles working media credential for me in 1987. Look at that. 4 15, 1987. Do you know what happened that night? What date? 4 15. April 15, 1987. 19- I mean, let, me, let, me, let me wet my whistle, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find out. 1987. I think April that's from a special night. 15. Now, keep in mind, I'm like a, I'm like a card dealer. I'm not really like doing anything on purpose. It's all just kind of coming out of the bag. <laughs> this, this here, um, if I'm correct, was a very special night, and it's a reason I have a one game press pass. because I had a season pass, but I didn't have it on me that night. Mm-hmm. And something very special, I believe. Happened that night, and I'm going to type in what I think happened that night, and then you can tell me if it actually happened uh, that night. And I'm looking to see. Oh, I'm looking at it now, and I'm pretty sure that it happened that night, and it did happen that night on April the fifteenth, nineteen eighty-seven. Juan Nieves threw a no hitter against the Baltimore Orioles, becoming the second youngest player in Major League history to do so. I believe the final out was Eddie Murray hit a sinking line drive to right Robin center, Yout. and Robin Yount made a diving catch. That is absolutely... He's good. This guy's good. <laughs> He's good. But that's pretty good for me to look at 4 87 and saying, why did I have a single game credential? And, and, and if you can see, it's because... I called Jack Gibbons. I was at the game that night, and I didn't have locker room access. Mm-hmm. And I was that's not a Cub reporter, but I was 18 years old. Mm-hmm. And I, w- I, I got in my car on Kane Street, and I drove out the Alameda, you know, out 33rd Street. And I got there in the seventh inning. And I said to Jack, do you need help in the locker room? Because we were not overstaffed. Ken Rosenthal was there, and John, Jim Enneman was there. And I was on my way to work. And, and Jack said... Go to the locker room. Get to Nieves' locker. Get quotes. Mm-hmm. And I was at Juan Nieves' locker as an 18-year-old kid with this press pass, watching him get champagne-soaked by Robin Yount and probably Rob Deere, Jim Gantner, Don that, Wasn't Money's that the Brewers' th- first no-hitter, I the think? The 87, 1987 Brewers. Um, I can pull that 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 uh, that lineup up if I... I mean, let's do that. I'll pull the lineup up from that night. Good team. Um, I, I, 91 I, games, I think it's. Uh, here you go. The box score. It was a uh, seven to nothing game. The Flanagan Brewers were, for the n- were, were nine and zero. Oh. The Brewers were good. The Brewers started the year. Yeah, good. They won ninety games that year. Yeah, 90, they were 90, 91 games, something like that. Ten hits. Molitor, Yount, Braggs, Cooper, Svaim, uh Brock, Pachorik, Schroeder, Gantner, and Juan Nieves. And for the Orioles that night. Ken Gerhardt batted leadoff. No wonder they got no hit. Rick Burleson was 44. He batted second. Ripken, Murray, Lynn, Ray Knight, Lee Lacy, Lee Lacy. John T-Bone Shelby. There's my, one of my all-time favorites. Sugar right Bear there. batting ninth and catching. And by the way, guess who started that Mike game Flanagan. for the Baltimore Orioles? Mike Flanagan, starting pitcher. Didn't pitch so well. Starting pitcher. I, I suppose. Uh, let's see how many of those runs got given up early. Flanny. Nah, Flanny was okay. Six and third, five hits, three runs, all earned, it's four okay. walks. Four walks. Four walks. Come on, Flanny. All right. Uh, <laughs> I, I, bullets, press pass, um, 1986. Do you know why I went to the game that night? Who would have been a... a they play the Bulls? They played the Houston Rockets that night. Okay. 1986. So that would have been Hakeem the Dream. Elijah Wan. Islanders, Caps. Hey, there's something you don't see every day. A oh, Hartford Whalers press pass. How about that, right? Oh, 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 oh. How about this one? 
Tell me what that one is there, Luke. How about that? Maryland Georgetown? Is Maryland that the, Georgetown. Is that the Joe Smith, Keith Booth freshman year? That's it Very right there. Good. That's my. You like that? With the cap center? Here is my Lions, Houston Oilers, just like I told you. I went to the Lions Oilers game in August. There it is. There's the pass, and the other thing got you into the press box. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Phil Jackman's press pass from Long Island. I went with him up there to Long Island. I was at this game. It's the only time I've ever been to the Nassau County Coliseum. The Islanders fans were not happy that they lost. <laughs> Baltimore Spirit press passes. This, is the, um, this was to sign to get my 1993... World Series credentials, you had to sign the form. This was a standard agreement of what you wouldn't, wouldn't do. And that was in 93 at WWLG Radio, and I had to put my John Hancock. October 16th, 1993. Was that the 30-run uh, game night that Madonna played? Was that the 24 to 20, 18 to 16 game? It, what which game, night which was, game that? was it? 1993 World Series. This was dated was that October 16th. There was a game that was like 18 to 16. That right, they played no, no, that. I know. I can't remember which one. It was, it was game four, wasn't it? I, this, was, uh, the, the, this is the one I signed in Toronto. This was game one. Okay. <laughs> and, and Kurt Schilling uh, was a hard luck loser in game one. Because yeah, Philadelphia yeah, so. won. Schilling, 15 to 14. Schilling won 15 game five to send it back to Skydome. I remember incredible, that. Incredible night that night. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Phillies, uh, Blue Jays 15, Phillies 14, game four. That's the uh, 93 World Series. So I'm going through all this stuff. Uh, I'm trying to find anything that's like uh, that's maybe a little bit awkwardly weird, like uh, like the like the USFL Preakness Hospitality Tent. Anybody need a Preakness pass? 98 Rock, big bands, booze. I hear girls will have their tops. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm talking. <laughs> that's from a long time ago. And, and a far. Luke's here. We're going through stuff. And uh, it's all brought to you by Lightbridge Health Sports Medicine Institute. Uh, this was my little sort of John Stedman thing. This was a box that I found that I separated, okay? And this box was sort of like, uh, I think a box maybe 15 years ago. I pulled it aside and I put like really nice stuff in it. Okay. Like this is the box with like... It's the good stuff. Th this is like the Pulp Fiction, you know, like uh, th when they opened it, the light came out. This is that box right there. <laughs> I think the box like just gave me splinters. It's kind of crazy. This box is like 400 years old. I had this on Bank Street and Colgate. This box used to have baseball cards in it. I was just going to say, this that's, box a, had baseball that's cards a baseball in the card box well, right I mean, there. Look at the staining on that. The staining says 1970. It says Dundalk. It says all the things. So I put this up the other day. This was my News American employee doc pass. I showed that a picture of that the other day, and that was my extension, 8335. Sports. Uh, you know, Nasty, um, I was wondering, what's the approximate way to Memorial Stadium? You got, we used to take the prank calls down there, you know? <laughs> People call in with scores. So this is a um, very, I, I found a ticket that was significant to me, and I, and I put it on the side, and I wanted to show you how special it was because it was sitting on the side, and I pulled it out earlier, and now I can't find the damn thing, of course, naturally, right? Because, or maybe it was the wrong, <laughs> no, it's the wrong box. This was the box of the special stuff. Is it? Yeah, this is the box. This okay. is the, this was a special box. This box I was gonna here, say it's so special you can't find it. Well, this isn't <laughs> this isn't not special because it had a wrestling ticket from nineteen seventy six on it. There you go, right here. And, and so there's a wrestling ticket there. Okay, and that's uh, that's World Championship Wrestling nineteen seventy. I believe I looked this one up. Bruno, maybe Stan Hansen. Okay, ma maybe. Um, this was a really cool one here. This was Georgia Championship Wrestling. Woo! I Just celebrated think, his 70th birthday. I would think Austin Idol and the Junkyard Dog. Oh, 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 oh. He was there. And, and the, 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 um, the, the Road Warriors, I'm sure, were on that card. So if you look at that. How about the dude we met in Atlanta? Do you want to tell that story as a wrestling? The, the security dude, when we had DDP on, he came over to me. Right. And he said his uncle was Wildfire Tommy Rich. That's right. Our, the guy guarding our equipment said, hey, you guys seem like wrestling fans. And he said, <laughs> I, I, bet, I bet you remember my uncle. And I'm like, Who is, he's, all, he's always on Georgia Championship Wrestling. And I'm like, what's his name? It's pretty cool. He said, Tommy Rich. I said, Tommy Wildfire Rich, you're related to the Armstrong. He's like, how'd you know that? I'm like, because you, you thought I was a wrestling fan and I was. Here it is right here. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to the Baltimore Civic Center, the World Championship Wrestling from Georgia. Uh, there's my Gordon Soley. I'm sorry. I was not a very good... By the way, I was ringside. It was a really good seat, if you can see that. April 7th, 1984. Can I tell a Kevin Eck uh, story? Yeah. Kevin Eck and his mom, Shirley, 
And Orm, his dad, never went to the wrestling. So you see Kevin tell him, I'm telling stories, but he'll appreciate this. So his mother and he were wrestling buddies. Like the way mm-hmm. my dad and I went to baseball games, my parents both went to wrestling with me. My mom went to games, or I've written about my parents in, in the first book I wrote in 06 on my parents. But, um, but Kevin always went with his mom. His dad had no use for, ah, wrestling, it's fake. <laughs> that was, his dad was hilarious. But his mom would always go, and she loved wrestling, and she loved the good guys, and Kevin loved the bad guys. So, it was, so they got to know the Do you remember the box office at the Civic Center used to be where the front doors are that aren't mm-hmm. anymore, right? I mean, they moved it around. And the front doors always had the ramp in the middle. It was, it was a big down ramp. Right. And the box office... Looked like a Vegas cage, you know. It looked mm-hmm. like a Vegas mm-hmm. cashier cage. They knew one of the, the 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 women there. They didn't know her. They just showed up every month to buy wrestling tickets. They never bought ahead of time, and they always showed up. And the woman always kept them two ringside tickets. And Very cool. He always would go down on the night of the matches, and he had a thing. He said, "My mom and I go. We go to the same lady every month." And Kevin always sat ringside. It's very cool. So he had a whole gig, so he would always do that. But these were, these were all my wrestling tickets. So here, you can have fun with those. And I'm gonna, this was the box that I told you I pulled onto the side because it had a lot of really cool stuff. By the way, while we're on, um, while we're on no-hitters, okay, I just showed you the no-hitter that I walked into. Mm-hmm. I, here is the ticket from the no-hitter I walked out of. Are you ready for this? This is – and I, I just find this – there's 10,000 tickets here, but I have – I'm kind of Rain man right? Am I on a spectrum? Am I like no. – am I, am I like like Mary Lou Henner about dates and stuff? Am I, I mean, a little bit? My wife thinks I'm really weird that I know all this stuff. Uh. So on Labor Day weekend in 2001, if you've ever heard my Tony Gwynn interview, that weekend I offered to take my son to Alabama to see Leonard Skinner. And, I w- and, and Alabama played UCLA, and I sat with Phil Savage. The Ravens had just won the Super Bowl. So this is September of 01. I don't know the date on that, but it's September of 01. It's like a, like a card trick. I haven't even looked at the ticket. So I flew out to San Diego. My son didn't want to go because he was cantankerous. He was 17 years old. He was a pain in the ass. You can tell him I said so. <laughs> and that day, I broadcast on Labor Day for national radio. I interviewed Tony Gwynn on Sunday night. Kurt Schilling was there Sunday. I interviewed Schilling and Tony Gwynn. And then Monday, the St. Louis Cardinals came to town. Bruce Bochy came up and did 30 minutes of radio with me. Kevin Towers came up and did 30 minutes of radio with me. Tony La Russa came up and did 30 minutes of radio with me. And then this ticket stub, this is the only ticket stub I have that's a full ticket stub from a no-hitter. I walked into this game. You can look it up. September 3rd, 2001. You can see the awkward 6.05 time start. You can see that it was a free ticket because they just wanted to give me a seat. And I had a press pass for this game. And I walked out of this game in the fourth inning to catch a red-eye flight on Mm -hmm. Labor Day Monday night. And I landed at BWI Airport. In the morning, and I, and I got on my shuttle, and I looked down on the USA Today, and there it was up in the corner. The kid's name, I believe, was Bud Smith. Bud Smith. Bud yeah. Smith. Bud Smith threw a no-hitter in this game, and there is my ticket. So how about that? In one, I got 10,000 tickets here, dude. I found both of my no-hitter. What year was that? Those oh, 01. 01. 01. And that's my ticket. I don't know why these tickets are. Oh, I know why this ticket's here. This ticket was the day that Definitely Mike true. Rosigliano's children nicknamed me Nasty Nestor. That's why that ticket is out. So this ticket is from Los Angeles Dodgers Philadelphia Phillies game. Uh, that, that's the wrong year. Hold on. I got the wrong year. That's the wrong ticket stub. Because it, it was after Eddie Murray left. Hold on. I'll find it. Here it is. May 85. That must have been Fernando pitched that night. Because I would go to Philly when Fernando pitched. Okay. Right? When Fernando Good pitched, reason to go. When Fernando pitched, when Doc Gooden pitched, when Nolan Ryan pitched for the Astros, um, when Hershiser pitched later, I would go. When a pitcher pitched, I would go to Philly, whatever day that was. Makes sense. Uh, and the same thing with Steve Carlton would pitch for the Phillies. I would, if, the, if I was going to Phillies game, Steve Carlton was pitching. So this ticket stub here is unique, um, Luke, and I'm going to have you look this box score up for me. May 14th, 1989. And this was before Kurt Schilling got there. So I bought this ticket. I took my son up to this game. And this was a very significant game, 1989 for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Anything significant about the 1989 Los Angeles Dodgers team that would make a guy from Baltimore want to go to see the Los Angeles Dodgers? Eddie Murray hit two bombs that day. 
And the Phillies were marching pitchers in that I had never heard of. And I went over to Mike Rosigliano's house, and I said, Rosig, the Phillies had pitchers that were so bad that if you can name them, I'll babysit your kids. So in 1989, Rasig's kids were terrors. They were like three and five. <laughs> they're 40 now, and I know them, and they're still terrors. And you can tell Terry and Rasig, I said that. So I said, I will babysit your kids if you can name the relief pitcher's first names, if I give you the last names. And the winning name that he got was Todd Froworth. Ah. I can promise you that Todd Froworth pitched on May 14th, 1989, <laughs> the late great... Todd Froworth, Fro Dog or No Dog, who I once attended a March Madness game in St. Petersburg, Florida with Mike Messina. And I'll find that ticket stub for you later, too. Any of the wrestling ones stand out or the Georgia Championship? The one, see, I, I was so much, uh, I was an exclusive WWF kid. I mean, I, I was really, five, you know, I, I was born in 1983. Hulk Hogan, I mean, Hulkamania, rock and wrestling. The only thing I, I had my favorite wrestling I knew stuff. there were other wrestling promotions, but. All I really knew about it, Ric Flair. I knew the Road Warriors, but I was a WWF kid. But you did have. What? I'm going to teach you guys some wrestling. It in the next was segment. now. I've I've read about it in w, WWE Network. Is any wrestling fan's dream? They have they have Every, such a huge archive. And you now, and your brother of like, all that stuff. I, I watched Starcade 1983 about a month and a half ago. I mean, was that so Dusty? You mentioned Dusty, Dusty Steamboat on it was card? it was race against uh, Flair. It was, well, you know, that, early, that was the, early. Yeah. a 60 minute match, right? Yeah, yeah. Time limit match. It was so, I mean, it's all right. So, while we're on wrestling, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna break after we do this one, unless you have more wrestling you want to do. Um, I can't, I, I don't know where my Bruno ticket is from, from. From, I was at the Bruno match, and I had a um, when he lost to Billy Graham, when he lost to Billy Graham, yeah. And I had historic, I, I, I have the scorecard for it. I, 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 I don't know where it is. I think I have it. I told you. I, I found... If you and I do this 10 times, we will find... Yeah. I've already found two no-hitter tickets, and there they're the go. only... They're the needles in the haystack. Mm -hmm. Literally. So this is a really cool ticket, and I want you to look it up. Do you have that wrestling site that has all the cards on it? I found it on, online. I can find the card. So the card was Capital Center... I'm going to Google this. So it was a WWF card. It was on May the 31st. 1980. It was a very significant day in my life, and, and, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Because I, I grew up in, in Baltimore on the east side. We didn't have tr public transportation. So when the Bullets, I never saw a Bullets game. I, my dad told me he took me to Bullets games when I was really little. Mm -hmm. I don't have any recollection yeah. of seeing Kareem Abdul Jabbar play as a Milwaukee Buck right. or Walt Frazier play. I never saw the, the, er, the Baltimore Bullets play in Baltimore. And I wasn't even aware until way into my radio career that they had played games at, at Cole Fieldhouse. I actually had a conversation with um, uh, with the stat man, who's just awesome dude. We saw him at a game a couple months ago, and he he was at those games, those Cole Fieldhouse Bullets mm -hmm. games. So this ticket is from May 31st, 1980, and it's a professional wrestling ticket. And uh, it's, it's really, it was a $5 ticket. I had a really great seat. If you can see that, Section 121J was eighth row... Excellent. Middle, I mean, middle, middle, fifty yard line, center ice. It was an awesome, awesome seat. And this is the website here. They do all the house shows. It's called wwfoldschool.com. I want to give them credit because they did it. They do a great job. Because I did this a couple of months ago or a couple weeks ago when I found this ticket. This ticket's really significant in, in a lot of ways for me. So first things first. Um, make sure they got that right. I got the wrong date. I see. I got the. I got the. I've got tickets mixed up. The, the match I wanted to reference, Hulk Hogan wrestled as a bad guy against... It's March 8th, 1980. I yeah, because Hogan's no first run... Is that over here? I had the ticket. I found the Hogan's ticket. Hogan's first run with Vince Sr., he was a heel. He, he was, wrestled Andre the Giant at Shea in 80, I think it was. It was a big card, and he was he was the heel, and Andre was the face. So, and then 1987, they I'm tried to by, act I'm like that never happened. I'm off by one card. It was the early. It was a month earlier, March 8th, and I have the ticket. I'll find it. March 8th, 1980, Hulk Hogan wrestled Backlund, and I'm was sure Freddie Blassie man. Freddie yeah, Blassie, was a, that, when he was and, a heel, and, and, Freddie and was his man. Hogan came out in the goal, yeah, almost yeah. thunder lipsy, yeah. you know, like very exactly. Thunder That's exactly what it was, and. He he had the foot, the big foot, because mm -hmm. he was six nine, 
and he looked like he was going to break Backlund in half, kind of like in the, the Rocky movie, mm-hmm. like where he looked like he was going to break yeah. Stallone in half. And he was such a good heel. He came in as Terry Belay from Memphis, Tennessee, right? He was Hawk. He was what was he? He wrestled under Terry Bull Boulder, I think. Boulder at one was point. his name. He was nobody, but he was the main event. Very, very. Well, oh, and Vince Senior liked him because he was someone that looked respectable going up against Andre. I think he only, you know, had one or two or three matches. I think he 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 wrestled Backlund. In Washington, Philly, and New York, okay. it was like a. I think it was a tryout for Hogan, kind of, okay. sort of. Then Hogan, you know, won the championship and Thunderlips and Rocky Three. Like all yeah. of that happened right after that. Well, he went to he had, did Rocky Three, then went to AWA for a while, and then he came back, and that's when they March put the title 8th, on him. Nineteen eighty was really significant for me. It was the first time I ever went to the Capitol Center, and as a kid, I so I was born in sixty eight. Team leaves in 73. Caps are born in 74. And you got to understand, like, all we had in Dundalk were the rabbit ears, right? There was no home team sport. Mm-hmm. It was Channel 20 carried the games sometimes. And when they did, it was always grainy. The bullets were great. I'm talking, you know, the Big E and Greavy and, 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 and Unselled, and then after that, Bing and Reared. I mean, they had great, they were great teams those right. years, 75, 76, 77. And I loved the Bullets. My dad was so pissed that the team left. We never went to games. I mean, Magic came, Kareem, all that. And in 1980, wrestling got my family. Well, my dad saw that Hulk Hogan and Backlund were going to fight at the <laughs> Capitol Center. We had to find a way to get there. So the first time I ever went to the Capitol Center, and I'll never forget when I walked in there how, like, it was, like, so nice and blue and red. Mm-hmm. And, like, this is where the Capitals play, man. This is where the bull- the Big E plays here, man. Like, Larry Bird plays here, man. Magic plays here. Wow. It's unbelievable, man. So I got to go to the Capitol Center. So the card that night, Larry Zabisco and Mike Masters, Davey O'Han, and I remember Gorilla Monsoon fought that night. Because my dad, my dad loved Gorilla. My mom loved Haystacks. My dad loved Gorilla. Both my parents loved Bobo Brazil. Uh, Tony Atlas was on that card against Bobby Duncombe. Pat Patterson, he wrestled Lou Albano. Now, Lou didn't wrestle much in that day. Lou was more of like he would show up every once a year. He would show up on a house card, beat on a ring a little mm-hmm. bit. The Graham Wizard almost never showed up, right? Really? But when Graham had the title, he went everywhere. Because he had, to, I mean, he had to, then, he sure. had to get the, got to go all out. You got to get the sunglasses off, Wiz. <laughs> Wiz, I'm blinded, Wiz. Wiz, look I was, at the I was too young to remember the, the Grand Wizard. Look at the 23-inch pythons, Wiz. All right, we're doing wrestling. We're having fun. I have my special secret box of special stuff that I thought the right wrestling ticket was on, but I'm going to find my March 8th, 1980 ticket because I hate being inaccurate. My wife will tell you that too, that like I'm, I'm crazy about all that stuff. I, I went to the Spectrum once to see Bob Backlund. That was in July 31st, 1982. Look at that. So, I, I mean, we went places to see. Where, I mean, wrestling was a massive deal, part sure. of my... I mean, look at all the ticket stuffs in the 80s here. And, you know, once Georgia came, they were in, in within two weeks of each other. Mm-hmm. You could go to wrestling matches twice a month. And it got twice as expensive when the tickets were like $5 back in the day. That's 1981. So the really cool part of this website with all of these tickets is like you can bark out a date and I can give you the whole card. This WWE site does that. So I, I, I know I'm crazed by the newfangled part of the internet, but it's almost like baseball. <laughs> you can look it all up. Sure. Do you know how many newspaper? How many times people call the newspaper to bitch that we didn't put the wrestling results <laughs> in a Sunday paper? <laughs> and at the News American, we did it. At the Sun, we ain't put any wrestling in this year newspaper, you know? <laughs> He's Luke. I'm Nestor. It's all brought to you by LifeBridge Health Sports Medicine Institute. Telling some stories, going through some tickets, going through boxes of wrestling tickets. And uh, here's a Skipjacks New Haven Nighthawks ticket from 1987. That's for the road. I got a whole bunch of tickets. I get a uh, $1.59 special single hamburger fry and a 16-ounce drink at Wendy's. There you go, right there. Hot there you and go. juicy, hot and juicy. What was that? Is that a, is that a Skipjacks ticket there, too? That is a EHL 1980 playoffs Win you Baltimore Clippers, win you Clippers from Baltimore, fight you Baltimore. I'm having more fun than you. No, that's that's great. I'm Clippers desperate. are a little before my time. I'm, I'm going to get to the good <laughs> stuff here. I got some old school, my dad's World Series tickets. Excellent. We are WNST.net, AM 1570, WNST Towson, Baltimore. We're having fun, and we never stop talking. Baltimore sports.